Hi, I'm Scott. Welcome to Sin Stuff. Many of you noticed there was no video last week, and the reason for that was that I was out of town. I was up seeing one of my favorite bands of all time, Information Society. They were playing at a venue in Toronto. I went up, I got to talk to uh, Paul Robb from the band, as well as Zeke Prevbluda, I can't say his name, DJ Falcotronic, and uh, got to have a look at some of the gear they used on stage and take some videos so that I can share with you. So let's have a look at that now. So I did get to see my buddy Derek on the left here. He is a drummer for Images and Vogue. He's played with Strange Advance. He plays with When in Rome and a, and a half dozen other bands. He, he's just a, a great guy and I was glad to talk to him there. So let's have a look at the stage. This was actually being held in a bowling alley, believe it or not. This was called Mick Bowl. It's an annual event. Uh, this year is a three-day event with, I believe, nine different bands as a fundraiser for Ronald McDonald House. The first thing we get to look at is James Cassidy's rig. You will see he's got a Korg Kronos, an older Korg Kronos. And on top, he's got an Alesis performance pad, which he can trigger samples on by using his drumsticks there. Information Society uses a ton of samples. They've got samples in every song. Their, their songs are, are really not sample based, but I mean, they're structured around tons and tons of samples. They're known for it. So everybody up there has sample pads and then in behind you can see there is the case for a bass drum and i'm talking like a bass drum you would see in a parade and uh, <laughs> james who is the bassist actually came out and played that bass drum on stage for the last song which was uh, a winnie the pooh song believe it or not and uh yeah that was uh something different that i had not seen before over here we see Kurt set up this. He's a lead singer. Normally this is out in the middle of the stage, but uh, there were two acts that went on before them, so this is off to the side right now. He has a Novation Mini Nova. Uh, you can see he's got uh, presets set up for eight different tracks on there, as well as, of course, he has a Roland uh, SPD SX sample pad and his uh, trademark black drumsticks that he shoves up his sleeves. <laughs> He plays many, many of the different samples, you know, the standout samples that are in the various songs on that sample pad there. And then he uses the hose on the left there to sing into and then put a microphone at the other end at one point. If we look down at the floor, we can see that this is actually part of James rig where he has a Zoom B3 multi effects pedal uh, set up. Uh, I, I'm assuming that's coming out of his sample pad. I don't think it would make sense to have that coming out of the Kronos, but uh, I didn't actually check to be sure. Then we come over here and we look at Paul's rig. I was kind of mystified at the synth he was using here. I didn't immediately recognize it. It's an old Juno DI. Um, There's a lower end Juno at the time. And then he has it totally customized so that he can remember exactly what he's doing in what track. And you can see he's got his little cribs notes here so he remembers the different chords and for different songs. And, and this is pretty typical for a performance synthesizer when you've just got so much that you got to remember for so many different songs. You just got to write your crib notes everywhere you can get them. Up on top he has a microcorg uh, with a vocoder microphone which he does use. I would love to know where he got that Kraftwerk vocoder patch or if he made it himself. And again, this thing is absolutely covered with crib notes and lyrics and chord progressions. Now this is midied. I'm not sure what it was midied to that was actually generating samples, but I did see him play this where he was generating samples out of the microcorg. Now the microcorg does not have a sampler built into it, so he was triggering something with it. Uh, but he was actually playing the audio out of the microcorg and the Juno. So he, he definitely was playing uh, parts of the tracks from the synths themselves. Over on the left, uh, we have an older Asus laptop running Cubase Artist 6. 
Believe it or not, he's running this old version of Cubase. This is being used just to run backing tracks. So you can see he's got different backing tracks uh, set up for each song and then he's just uh, unmuting the song that they're playing and hits hits go. I asked him why he's using Cubase instead of some other background track player like a Camelot Pro or something and he just kind of laughed. He says, well, you know, I know Cubase. Now, Paul, he's a, a kindred spirit. He's a, a long time Cubase user as I am. I, I think he's gone back more than 20 years of Cubase and I know he does all his work today in Cubase. So it makes sense. I mean, I'm I would consider doing the same thing because I know Cubase. Anyway, he, he did laugh. He's like, yeah, I, I, I know it's not really suited, but it's it's what I know. I know it inside out, so what can you do? He might have a sampler in here or maybe a VST that is actually triggering off the microcorg. I'm not entirely sure it's possible. I actually saw this after I talked to him, so I, I don't really know for sure. Uh, I would have asked him otherwise. Down below, he's got an iPad for crib sheets, and he's got a couple audio interfaces and then a small mixer so that he can mix his levels between the, the synths and the backing tracks. Over here, we have the world of Zeke Prebluda, who is their VJ, and he has a, a, an interesting setup. He's got a Roland V4EX. Uh, video mixer and it can do live effects is chroma keys and colorization luma keys and all kinds of, of crazy effects and that is paired with an Akai APC 40 which is uh, typically used in Ableton in his case he's using it in to trigger video clips off of Grand VJ which is a, a VJ application so he's got all of these video clips that he has mapped into the controller and he sits up here and generates video for the video screens in real time to the music so you can see he's hammering away on apc 40 playing all the different video clips and at the same time he's over here on the roland applying effects and changing the, the clips and so every every show is going to be different because it's just what he's doing at the, in the spur of the moment he actually has a little wireless thing <laughs> So I had to talk to him after the show because I was so impressed with what he was doing and I had to know what was that thing he was walking around with you know wirelessly on stage and what it was it, he, he kind of grinned and he says it's actually an old Newmark controller it's a Newmark Orbit and it's a wireless controller so he has it wired up along with his APC so that he can jump around on stage and control the, the video as well. I suppose you could uh, have it triggering loops and samples and things in, in Ableton as well. I had to laugh at some of Zeke's area. He's got like Star Trek comic books and 3D printed things and whatever the hell that thing is with all kinds of knobs and spray painted case. Uh, I, I thought at first it was just a decoration, but it's definitely plugged in. So he's got like this whole array of like a Rube Goldberg video live production system. You can see his little monitor at the back. Of course, everything is covered in stickers and very unique guy, very odd guy. Zeke, or DJ Falcotronic as he's known, is a very odd fellow. I do have to make a mention for Marisa Lenhart, who is known as Diva Marisa. If you have a look on YouTube, you can actually see her doing the uh, Diva dance from Fifth Element. She sings that regularly, and she has her uh, several videos of her doing that performance on YouTube. She was spectacular. She's a, a trained operatic vocalist. She sang on several of the songs that they played. You have a look at a little bit of the performance here. You can see Paul is definitely triggering samples with that microcorg. And you can see he's got a MIDI cable coming right out the back of it. For the most part, it seemed like he was playing uh, bass parts and sometimes some uh, arpeggiated sequences that were coming out of the microcorg. And then sometimes he was doing the same thing with uh, some pads and chords on the, the Juno DI on the bottom. I didn't mention the drummer or his pads, but again, he's, he's set up with a whole set of pads which are triggering samples, in this case, obviously drum samples. And over here, you can see Kurt triggering samples on his sample pad, which you can hear in the track. 
So in this clip, we'll be able to see Kurt triggering samples, and he likes to sing along with the samples that he's triggering. We see James here playing bass. And then Kurt is going to do one of his patented grab the camera out of the crowd and give us a tour of the stage. So we get to have a look at the performers on stage as they're actually playing. So let's have a look. did want to thank Paul Robb. He is just gracious and very friendly, nice guy. I really enjoyed talking to him. Uh, the band was fantastic, uh, so tight, and uh, I couldn't have been more impressed with uh, everything they, they did. They put on a great show. The crowd loved it. it they were the headliner of a three-band uh, evening, and they, they just blew everyone away. So that's it. I hope you like what you saw today. If you do, hey, click subscribe, maybe click like. If you have any comments, questions, anything, leave them in the comment section below, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching.